Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Great to see you on this Tuesday out there. Hopefully we all are having a wonderful start to the day and hopefully our start to the week yesterday was pretty nice as well. Now in today's video, we do actually have a uh, surprisingly high amount to talk about as overnight the models have come in and uh, this weekend storm that we talked about yesterday is looking to be much more impactful and powerful of a storm system than we thought just yesterday. And this is uh, one of those things that we kind of see with El Nino oftentimes where uh, we just get rounds of these storms and we just saw one this past weekend and now this coming weekend we could once again be dealing with a very strong low pressure system bringing lots of rain, lots of wind, maybe even some severe weather and a little bit of snow is not out of the question. Not very likely with a storm but can't roll out some snow for some folks as well. So we'll definitely break all of that down in today's video. Now if you haven't already subscribed definitely consider doing so. Uh, like the video if you like it and comment let me know if you're a new viewer watching. We've gained a lot over the the past couple of weeks so uh, definitely trying to get to know everybody and also if I haven't gotten around to um, replying to all the comments from yesterday I do apologize I had a bit of a busy day but I do promise you I do read all of them so uh, even if I don't comment directly I can guarantee you I see it so I uh, just kind of keep that in mind as well uh, I guess with all that said we can go ahead and get right into that forecast so we'll go ahead and start off with our satellite imagery here taking a look at visible as the sun is beginning to rise across the continental United States you'll notice a bit of nothing really going on right now we have a lot of really nice pockets of weather this morning albeit very cold and I know some places at least here in the Carolinas had a lot of frost overnight so let me know if that's something that you saw where you live I know at least kind of here in the southeastern part of the country got very cold last night and those dew points and those temperatures came together and uh, we saw plenty of frost uh, really through a lot of different communities. So let me know if that was something you also saw in your community. Now outside of there, uh, again, not really much ongoing. We do have a little bit of energy kind of swinging on through the Midwest and Northeast. That could bring some lake effect snow showers over the next couple of days, but really all eyes are now turning to whatever happens with our next piece of energy that's still kind of out here uh, in the West Coast that will eventually work East, and that will be our big time storm starting really as early as tomorrow and Thursday, but then really ramping up going into this weekend. Now, taking a look at our current watches, warnings, and radar imagery, you'll notice, uh, again, a lot more quiet than what we saw just a couple days ago. We do have some scattered snow showers working on through Nebraska this morning, and those could continue to drift off towards the east, towards Iowa and Missouri. But outside of that, uh, again, overall, a pretty quiet day for most folks. Now, I will mention, uh, we do already have some winter storm watches up for you folks here in uh, northeastern New Mexico and extreme southern Colorado. That, for this storm system that is, again, going to continue to crank up and bring a lot of snow to sections here of the southern Rockies and even into some of the uh, lower elevations out into the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle. Um, now, I'm going to go on a tangent here, but it's funny whenever I say lower elevations out there, and this is something I never knew, uh, but <laughs> a lot of the elevations out there in the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle are like the height of some of our highest mountains out here uh, in the Appalachia chain. So that's something kind of interesting. You always picture the plains and you think it's very flat, but it's actually really the entire continent is sloping up this way towards the Rockies. So uh, just, I don't know, I always find that interesting. Maybe you do too. But we'll get back to the weather now and uh, I'll leave the geography lessons for some other time. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next 48 hours or so, and you'll notice when we look at this, uh, really not much is going to go on. Again, we could see some scattered snow showers in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri today, and we could also see some lake effect snow showers into sections of New York State, up through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, but outside of that, uh, the next 24 hours are quite uh, quiet. But you'll notice, once we go into overnight tonight into early tomorrow, here comes that precipitation building up back out uh, here towards the west part of your map. And I'm going to zoom in on that area, so I'm going to kind of gloss over it right now, but don't worry, we're about to zoom in here in just a moment. Uh, but either way, you'll notice going through the rest of this is Wednesday on your map, still not too much outside of that lake effect snow and of course that storm system building up back to our west. So everyone really east of the Mississippi River is going to have a very quiet 48 hours or so now through um, through Wednesday and even through Thursday afternoon. Now it's going kind of into that Wednesday Thursday time frame though that our storm system out west begins to gain traction and eventually is going to merge with some other pieces of energy and likely cause a big powerful storm along the east coast going into this weekend. So taking a look at our latest European model here at our 500 millibar height relative vorticity and this is going to do a great job at showing what we're dealing with. 
So this is uh, going into Tuesday evening and early Wednesday. Here's the storm system itself. It's kind of a piece of energy that gets cut off from Canada and dives south into the Four Corners region. You'll notice as I move this ahead in time, I'm sorry, let me clear that off your map. <clears throat> you'll, <coughs> excuse me, you'll notice as I move this ahead in time, uh, sorry, I'm getting choked up on the weather. Um, as I move this ahead again for the fifth time, that storm system continues to move off towards the south and east through the four corners and eventually kind of gets into the southern plains by the time we get into later Thursday and early Friday. Now, this is whenever we're going to have a lot of different pieces of energy flying around and they're eventually going to kind of um, merge into one. So here's one piece of energy up in Canada. This is our main storm system still in Texas. And then we'll also have some energy down here in the Gulf Stream. So when all of these kind of converge into one, and you'll notice this happens on the map, that's when things get very interesting. This is going into Friday afternoon. You'll notice they're still relatively separated. Then we go into Saturday afternoon, and you'll notice on the European model, this is whenever the first piece of energy up in Canada and our storm system down in Texas begin to phase together or merge. And then eventually, as we move this further ahead into time and those two merge, that third piece of energy down near the Gulf also uh, kind of gets in on the game, and then all three of them merge. And next thing you know, we have a big storm system forming and spinning away up the East Coast on our latest European model. Now, that's not technically exactly necessarily what's going to happen. The GFS model has a bit of a different solution, although um, still one that warrants a bit of an interesting uh, outcome. So moving this ahead, again, this is our original storm system that's going to bring that snow to New Mexico and Texas. Here's that second piece of energy on the GFS, and you'll also notice energy down here in the Gulf. I'm going to move this ahead in time here, and again, um, on the GFS, what's a little different is they all kind of merge at the same time in the southeast, and that would lead to a different storm system than the European. The European model kind of showed the storm riding up the coast, bringing impacts that way. The GFS kind of merges all of this over the southeast, and just has one big storm system that kind of stalls out and spins away over the Carolinas for a couple of days, going through the second half of this weekend and into early next week, and you'll notice that's a big time storm on your map. Uh, so that's nothing to kind of just um, scoff out and uh, brush away. Even if we're not necessarily seeing winter impacts out of this storm, that's going to be very breezy, very rainy, likely coastal flooding with this, maybe severe weather. So uh, again, a lot of things that we need to consider here. I know it's December and everyone wants to hear about snow, but that might not necessarily be exactly what uh, is in the cards for the storm system. Okay, now let's go ahead and kind of break down the first half of the storm system, what we know is going to happen out here into Texas and New Mexico. And in this area, things are going to stay quiet through today. It's going into tomorrow morning that things begin to, I don't want to say deteriorate, but begin to get a little more interesting. You'll notice here this is about 5 o'clock local time tomorrow. Uh, rain showers beginning to break out over much of Texas, but specifically West Texas there up through the Panhandle. Now, going through the afternoon Wednesday, this is when all of that precipitation is really going to break out, and we begin to see those winter impacts in those higher elevations of New Mexico and southern Colorado. And all of this will continue throughout the day Wednesday into overnight Wednesday. So let me um, move the map ahead a lot just so the... Uh, stops uh, delaying but anyway uh, there you go uh, going into Wednesday afternoon and evening again that snow continues to break out over much of uh, southern Colorado even into sections of eastern Colorado can't roll out some snow in the Denver area and other than that the rain continues through the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle now going into overnight Wednesday into Thursday we're going to continue to see these rounds of precipitation move on through and that's when I think we'll have the greater chance of some snow working into the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle, maybe even here into southwestern uh, Kansas as a storm system kind of pulls away and enough cold air gets trapped on the backside there. And you'll notice our latest NAM model really breaks out that snow for you folks going into uh, later Thursday evening and into the early half of Friday. So to just kind of recap all of that, again, snow for much of our Wednesday and Thursday through the higher elevations of northeastern New Mexico and southern Colorado, rain for everyone else in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, but likely changing to some wet, heavy snow on the backside going into our Thursday evening uh, for much of that Texas, Oklahoma panhandle region. Now, taking a look at, you know, snowfall totals, how much snow are we going to see in these regions? Well, I think uh, some of us are going to see a really good, you know, thumping of snow, especially in these higher elevations of north 
eastern New Mexico could see upwards of a foot there on those highest peaks with uh, kind of some of the lower elevations, I think closer to half a foot. Now, as you get kind of a little further out of the mountains, one to three inches, I think, one to three inches of snow, I think is going to be a better bet here into southwestern Kansas and into the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle. Uh, then the higher elevations of Colorado, obviously pretty similar to New Mexico there on your map with a lot of snow falling for those highest peaks. And I'm sure those ski resorts will be plenty happy to see that in the forecast. All right, so now that we've kind of talked about all of that, let's go ahead and discuss uh, some more of these impacts on the East Coast with this storm system. And I'm going to show you three different models, kind of the big three, if you will, the European, the GFS, and the Canadian model as well, because all of them are showing uh, very impactful storms, but in very different ways. So this is going to give us a good chance to look at what this weekend could potentially look like and also show us the spread of possibilities as we're still kind of trying to figure out exactly what uh, is on the way. All the models, I will say, do agree. Uh, all of this is going to start over New Mexico and Texas over the next couple of days, as we just discussed. Now, it's going into our Friday and Saturday that the models are a little more different. This is the European you're looking at. And uh, here's that rain kind of beginning to fall around the Gulf Coast states. A lot of rain in Florida, likely on Saturday, even into overnight Saturday. And then on the European, these pieces of energy begin to merge together overnight Saturday into Sunday. And here comes that storm system right off the coast of the Carolinas. And uh, anytime you see anything below 990 millibars that close to the coastline, we're going to have problems. Likely a pretty good amount of onshore flooding there through sections of the Outer Banks, uh, down potentially even into the PD region of South Carolina. And just to give you an idea of, um, I don't want to say how big of a deal this is, but how impactful this really could be, this is the equivalent of a hurricane riding up the coast. Uh, the only difference is it's going to be cold cord instead of warm cord. So the impact's really the same, just this is going to feel a lot less tropical and feel much more like a mid-latitude cyclone going into early next week. And then the European really cranks the storm system up, rides it up the coast, and I mean, my oh my, less than 970 millibars right there on the northeast coastline, that's going to cause big uh, wind problems, big rain problems, big coastal flooding problems. Uh, again, this is the equivalent of almost... Uh, you know, a category two hurricane riding up the coast. So this is by all stretches of the imagination, pretty equivalent to a very strong nor'easter and uh, will bring with it the same impacts that nor'easters do, likely just a little less wintry and a little bit more on the, um, I don't want to say warm side because it'll still be cold, but less wintry side. Okay, so that was the European model. Let's take a look at the GFS now. Again, still showing the storm system, but in a different way. We talked about earlier how the GFS kind of merges all of those pieces of energy together a little sooner, and that's going to cause the storm system to develop more over the southeast, over Georgia and the Carolinas. And a solution like this, uh, less strong in terms of pressure, but still plenty strong enough that we're going to see lots of flooding due to all of that rain. Still very strong onshore winds bringing coastal flooding, and with this solution, potentially even some severe weather as enough warm air gets pumped northward into uh, the southeastern United States that could cause some severe thunderstorms, including the risk of a couple of tornadoes going into this Sunday. And then the GFS kind of just hangs that around for a while into next Monday before finally pushing it on out to sea and doesn't really impact the northeast all that much compared to what the European model showed. Now, the last model I'll show you out of the three, at least in this kind of map, is going to be the Canadian model. And the Canadian kind of um, puts the GFS and the Euro together and comes up with a real crazy solution here. So going into this weekend, again, here's the storm system. You'll notice it developing off the Carolina coastline. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary there. But as we move this ahead, this storm really bombs out and has... Um, the strength that the European had in the northeast, but over the southeast coastline. And should this happen, uh, this would be, um, I don't want to say unprecedented because things like this happen, but this would be pretty crazy to see a storm system this strong off the southeast coastline this time of year. Normally it takes time for these storm systems to really mature this much, and generally it happens up here off the northeast coastline and not the southeast coastline. So that would bring really big impacts with a ton of coastal flooding, really strong winds, widespread power outages, and plenty of torrential downpours through much of the Carolinas this weekend before eventually also moving up the coastline, although weakening while doing it. So we definitely have a lot of different um, possibilities here with our uh, different models from uh, some impacts to pretty big impacts to, oh no, these are really big impacts for a lot of different people. 
Uh, the good news is we have plenty of time to kind of iron the details out on this. It's only Tuesday now, and this wouldn't really begin to unfold until about this Sunday going into next Monday. Uh, now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, it is December after all, a lot of us are hoping for snow. Well, what are the chances of seeing snow out of this storm? None of those models really showed it, but if we dive into our um, <clears throat> ensembles here, you'll notice it's not a 0% chance of snow by any stretch of the imagination, but it's pretty low. So the latest European ensembles uh, show if anyone's getting snow out of this this weekend, it's likely going to be in the higher terrains of North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, and even then we're only clocking in at about a 5-10% to 10 chance of seeing any accumulating snowfall. Um, so sure, I'm sure you've all seen the meme where the guy's saying, oh, so there's a chance. Yes, there's a chance. However, I really wouldn't uh, put any money on it as there's just really not much of a supply of cold air. Now, maybe after this storm, it looks like there could be a shot of cold air on the backside that could potentially then bring some snow uh, somewhere here along the East Coast. We'll watch that, but even then, that's more than a week away. So I think within the next week, even including this storm, uh, the chances of accumulating snowfall, unfortunately, are very low for most folks. Now, one thing I can guarantee you that will accumulate, that is the rainfall. Uh, we're going to see a lot of it, especially here along, or not along, but really through the entire Florida Peninsula, and I think up the Carolina coastline, uh, is going to be most impacted likely by this flooding rainfall and even potentially coastal flooding. Uh, our latest um, blend of all models here showing sections of the Florida Peninsula getting near 5 inches of rain and 3 to 5 inches of rain looking likely up the coastline from Jacksonville through Savannah, Charleston, uh, back up towards Wil uh, Wilmington and into the Outer Banks. So that's a lot of rain and even inland we could see some rain as well here along the I-85 corridor into the Carolinas as the storm likely rides uh, at least slightly up the coast even if not all the way up the coast. Now, one more impact that we're going to need to talk about with this one, and I'm sure a lot of you who just lost power this last weekend aren't going to be in the mood to hear this, but if we do get a storm like this, the wind gusts are going to be a pretty big deal. And you'll notice uh, our latest, uh, what model are we looking at? European here. Again, this is the model that really blew the storm up uh, kind of over the northeast. Well, right here into the coastal plain of South Carolina and North Carolina, winds picking up into tropical storm strength potentially, especially into the Outer Banks. This would be overnight uh, Sunday into Monday. And eventually, if this storm does work all the way up into the northeast, widespread tropical storm strength winds there uh, that could very easily knock down some power lines, uh, knock down some trees, and cause some big problems before, luckily, the storm looks to move away by about the middle of next week. And uh, then we'll have to, you know, watch whatever's on the way after that. But again, overnight, a lot of these models showing a bit of a concerning picture this weekend for a lot of folks. And we'll continue, of course, to time this out for you, uh, iron out those impacts, and give you a better idea of what's on the way. But... Uh, all, or all signs are there that this will be a very impactful storm and likely a very powerful one. We'll just have to watch to see exactly when does it get powerful and how far inland does it push, does it say off the shore. Uh, those are the kind of variables we'll still need to time out. Okay, so uh, with all that said, again, hopefully you found the video of use. If you did, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, like the video as that means a lot and helps the channel continue to grow. With that said, though, I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.